What's happening all you mentees? Uncanny Omar here from Nearman Condition, the home of Collected Editions. And today I'm going to be doing my overview of the Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens Omnibus, the 2022 edition from DC Comics. So, stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. So here we have the 2022 version of of Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens Omnibus, featuring a cover here by Gillen March. And here are all the credits, Paul Dini, Peter Calloway, Tony Bedard, Gillen March, and Andres Guinaldo, featuring Poison Ivy there, Harley Quinn, and Catwoman. Now it is interesting because this is called Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens, but that's not what the original title was called. The original title was just called the Gotham City Sirens. Here is what the spine looks like. Harley Quinn and the Gotham City Sirens Omnibus, Dini, Calloway, Bedard, March, and Winaldo, the DC logo. So it's probably cashing in on the popularity of Harley Quinn. And the original printing of this was released in 2018, which we'll look at here in a little bit. Here's what the back of the book looks like. The book retailing for $100. And the first printing, the one printed in 2018, is on the left-hand side. This one retailed for $75. And as far as the colors, really no difference at all. Logo is the same, the same font they use for the creators, the spines together right there, and the back of the Omnis here. Again, retailing for $75, this one $100. The image is identical in the size and everything. The font that they're using is a little bit different over here than the font they're using in the original printing, but that's about the only difference I see. Underneath the dust jacket, it's this image right here. I've always loved this image. Oh, it's such a hot image. But let's look and see. That is identical right there, and the back of the omnibus is identical with this image of the three main characters. Now, let's go ahead and look inside of this book talk a little bit about the plot when this takes place in the world of batman comics in the reading order and then we'll do a little comparison to the original printing okay so let's open this up this black end paper there and this image by Gillen March. And by the way, Gillen March does all the covers for this particular series. And there's not a lot, and I mean not a lot, like three or four pages of extras in here. Uh, here are the credits. You have Paul Dini, Peter Calloway, Tony Bedard, Scott Lobdell, Mark Andreco, and Gillen March. And then the artists right here um, on the book. Gillen March doing most of the Paul Dini era. The colorist, J.D. Smith. Jose Villarubia's colors are at the very beginning, oh my gosh, I just remember being blown away. And the letters here by Steve Wands and Travis Lanham. And Harley Quinn, created by Paul Dini and Bruce Tim. You hardly see that. Uh, you see that mainly with like Batman and Superman, Batman created by and Superman created by. Here's an interesting introduction by Paul Dini, but it's Harley Quinn writing over his notes. And here it is. This kicks off the era of Gotham City Sirens. So what is this about? When does all this take place? So the first thing I have to talk about is when all this takes place. Because it is a very specific era of Batman. And it can get a little bit confusing if you're just reading this and you're not reading Batman. Because as far as most people know, I'm, I'm sure even if they haven't read a single Batman comic, they know that Bruce Wayne is Batman. Well, not during this run, because this is after the events of Heart of Hush and after the events of Battle for the Cow. So, actually, the very first part is Catwoman having a narrative about how she got her heart pulled out by a maniac, and you can find out who that is. Uh, she got pushed out a window by somebody wearing the Batman armor. That all took place again during the Battle for the Cow stuff. And she's not as good as she used to be she's not as good mentally and health wise as she used to be so she's out jumping around the buildings of gotham and she encounters this guy right here this is what is his name skull blast yes bone blaster sorry 
somebody brand new that's trying to make for a name for himself and you can see that she's out of the game because he immediately grabs her by the neck and starts crushing her and he wants to kill her to make a name for himself but before he can do that enter poison ivy so this is the two of them kind of reconnecting she asked her hey what are you doing in gotham city i gave you 30 million dollars again in the aftermath of the whole heart of hush storyline and then of course poison ivy says oh yeah i took those 30 million dollars and i donated it to some kind of for keeping the forest alive charity i can't even remember the name of the charity so she takes her back to her place where she's staying and she's staying with edward nigma who she's got completely bound up so what I meant by this is an interesting era of Batman, it's right now, during this time, yes, Bruce Wayne is not Batman. Something happened in the pages of Batman, now Dick Grayson is Batman. He's the one that's under the cowl. So, the relationship between Catwoman and Batman isn't the same that you probably see in movies or in the animated show or what you've probably heard of that's happening in the comics. Uh, during this time, Edward Nigma, the Riddler, has also been reformed and he's more of a private eye solving crimes and again it's an interesting era so this takes place in this weird little part of dc where batman is dick grayson and it's right before flashpoint so right before the new 52 reboot and this was so fun uh in steps harley quinn who has actually spent all her money that she gave her on clothing and things like that and it's also important to note that during this time, the Joker is at Arkham. That's why Harley Quinn is free of him. So this is less to do with Catwoman and Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy, but more to do with Selina Kyle, Pamela Isley, and Harleen Quinzel. So that's what this is about. It's more about the characters. It's more about the people behind the mask. And... I think it's so good because it reads like a sitcom. Like the very first story arc here is about, yeah, how they're trying to get a name for themselves, try to clear their names. And, you know, Gotham isn't the same as it used to be. We have a new Batman out there. Now, they don't know it's Dick Grayson, of course. And I love this, that she gets uh, Zatanna because Zatanna was one of the people that helped restore Catwoman. Remember when I said she got her heart pulled out? One doesn't naturally come back from that. Even in the DC universe where you have like the top surgeons operating on you, you still need a magical touch. So Zatanna tells her, oh yeah, I put a magic spell, it healed her heart. She's she's okay now. She just has to, you know, get back to the game. So the three of them decide to live together. Uh, they go to the broker. From the broker, they buy this particular building and they decided to make it their headquarters of course these are villains we're talking about so they kind of turn on each other from time to time and i'll talk a little bit about that more here in a second but the very first issue ends with both harley quinn and poison ivy confronting catwoman and they finally want the answer who is batman and i love the way that she answers that question so this is why you're gonna see a whole mystery as to uh who batman is uh where bruce wayne is because there is a bruce wayne that shows up here but is it the same bruce wayne because there is a bruce wayne that's walking around and is it really the bruce wayne that everybody knows because selena doesn't seem to think so so i like the dynamic between the three characters this feels like a sitcom it feels less of a superhero or even super villain team-up book but more of a yeah a sitcom about three girls living inside of the same place and trying to deal with each other's and their nuances and the things that they love about each other. And the first half of the book is all written by Paul Dini. And that to me is completely worth the price of admission. Because that is some of the best stories that are going to be collected in any kind of omnibus. I love this stuff. I used to have them in trade paperback and then I got like the big fat trades. And then I upgraded to this because this was more complete. Because... The Omnibus is the only way to get, I think, the Catwoman issue with this. So I didn't even talk about what this collects. So this collection is identical to the first printing. It collects Gotham City Sirens 1 through 26 and Catwoman 83. And I'll talk about the importance of that here in a little bit. But through here, you get to see 
characters make a comeback. Obscure characters like Gaggy. Now, you don't know, need to know who Gaggy is. Um, he was a sidekick to the Joker and decided to part ways with him after, well, Joker ended up with Harley Quinn. So, this is the Catwoman issue. I think this issue is really interesting. And it's collected in here because, yes, it is Catwoman. And it's the return of one of her dead characters because this is part of the whole Blackest Night. Uh, crossover and it's an issue that happens after the cancellation of the original Catwoman series but it also has to do with the birds of, uh, not birds of prey uh <laughs> the Gotham City Sirens so they show up in here and that's why it's collected in here uh, you get some ups and downs through here Gail and March and Mark and Draco tell an interesting story in here they team up I love the fact that <laughs> Poison Ivy gets a job at Star Labs and she's trying to be a good person but she can't help herself so she uses her powers to manipulate men into giving her a raise and a promotion because yes they are super villains after all and each one of them has an interesting weakness i, I talked about the relationship between catwoman and batman and it feels like these weaknesses is what can break them because it's all about this bonding and being friends and then it feels like each... I love this story, too, where somebody's kidnapping the dogs in uh, Harley's neighborhood. But this is an interesting story. This is about Catwoman's sister, Maggie, coming back, and she's possessed by some kind of angel. But it, what I was saying is, like, there is this strong bond and friendship between these three characters. And you get a little bit of hint in the relationship that, well, is further explored between Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn in here. But what ends up like breaking them sometimes is their true roots, is who they are. It's what almost to what they're addicted to in a weird way. Like for Selena, it's Batman, it's Bruce Wayne. Uh, for Poison Ivy, it's this alien being. This is really interesting. This is this alien being that crash landed on our planet a few years ago. They're investigating it and it turns out it's alive, but it's a plant based alien being. And the plant wants to take over the world. And. You figure she would side with her friends, but no, she decides, okay, yeah, let's go conquer the world. So she turns on her friends. And the thing that, well, can break apart Harley Quinn is the Joker. Because this is also important to note that this all takes place before the New 52. So this is more of the uh, type of Harley Quinn that you've seen in the Batman animated series in their messed up relationship in the pre-52, New 52 era, where it's almost like a drug that she's addicted to. So it's like a weakness for her, the Joker is. And the way that he treats her, well, I mean, let's not beat around the bush. It's a horrible, toxic relationship that they're in. But for some reason, she loves it, and she wants to keep going back to it. She wants to keep going back to Mr. J. So that's like kind of the things that drive them apart from each other so there's a really good story in here i think towards the later end but peter calway doesn't really get a lot of praise it's mainly paul dini of course tony bedard took over a few issues and he had some interesting stories i think the issue with um calway was that he really didn't get the voice down of these characters but he had some interesting plot uh lines such as the one where harley quinn goes to arkham to try to kill the joker and just be done with him like, that is the only way she can break from him is by killing him. I thought that was an interesting story. Um, there is a crossover here, but it's only one part of the crossover. I'm surprised they never did this properly. I think it's this one. Yes, it's this issue right here with a beautiful cover by Gillen March, issue number 22. And this is a crossover with Batman and Red Robin, but you only get part three of the crossover. And I thought... Well, it would, it would have been so much better if they had collected the whole thing because you don't even get a recap. But they did the same thing in the first printing. And then, of course, by issue 26, it all comes to an end. They all go their separate ways. And then the DC Universe ends up rebooting anyway with Flashpoint and U52. But this brought back a lot of memories. A lot of fun memories of why I enjoyed these stories. You know, The characters just interacting with each other, not having to deal with world colliding events well up until i guess flashpoint uh when the worlds really literally collide and become one again but this is gotham city sirens and i wasn't kidding i mean there's like love the cover by the way to the final issue but as i was saying there are 
only three or four extras in the back so these are the variant covers to issue number one uh variant cover to the paperback right here uh, three and the variant cover to the paperback volume two so these are the fat trades i was talking about as far as the binding here it is sewn binding not much of an eye right there but the book did lay over all right i was rereading some of these earlier this week and i didn't have a problem with the way the book laid over now, let's do a quick comparison to the original printing. Under the dust jacket, they are identical. As a matter of fact, identical so much that both of these books were printed at the same printer. Both of them were printed in Canada. So, I noticed that even the color schemes look identical. The paper stock seems to be the same paper stock they used. I was going to do a comparison of the colors but i mean there are no comparisons one is printed in 2022 and the other one is printed in 2018 they both have the exact here let's look at this cover for example i mean that is the same color schemes and everything like there's no difference at all both of these books have 648 pages and the binding now one thing i wanted to point out before looking at a spread page from both of the books is the differences in the eyes here so the original printing up at the top and the new printing at the bottom and honestly i don't know how much stretching you'll do on your new printing but i don't know if the eye will ever look like that from the original printing and both of them from the same printer and you know some people are like oh that's too big of an eye that's gonna look bad here in a few years so really what it comes down to is what you prefer but I like them like that. That's a good eye for me. This one, eh, eventually I think will get bigger. So I did want to do a quick comparison to the way the book lays over. Keep in mind both The Astonishing Melanie and I have read this book probably a number of four times, this omnibus. So that spine has been stretched uh, properly. This one here, I did the proper spine stretching. I read some of the early issues and some of the last issues. So there's a little bit more of a gutter curve right here so you get a little loss of artwork but not very much but figured i'd use this as an example in the way that the books lay over original printing new printing but that as they say is that if you're interested in purchasing this omnibus don't forget to check out our sponsor cheapgraphicnovels.com your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50 percent off cover price they have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know near mint condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the content, the page count, build in comparison to the original printing of this particular omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you are picking this up, if you missed out on the original printing, if you have the trades, if you read this in single issues, and if you've never read it before, leave all those comments down below. If you have any more questions, always leave your questions down below. I just want to take this time to thank our patrons for making videos like this possible. And everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.